weeks. In last week's sermon from Romans 8, 18 through 25, I preached about how your present sufferings, whatever they may be, whenever they're hanging around your life, that they're not worth comparing to the future glory that God has in store for you in Christ. And I said, your best days are coming with Christ when he returns. And when you consider all that's coming, that Christ is bringing, I mean, he's the greatest, obviously. He's the center of attention. But what he's going to bring um, is going to be beyond um, anything that we can imagine. And when you put your suffering in, 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 in the front of that and compare it, it, Paul says, it's not even worth comparing or holding up to. It's going to be so great. Now, with all that said, um, sufferings are going to hang around. Something you're going to have to deal with more or less, through your sojourn here on this earth. I think you know that. That's not new news. Um, they're going to show up at your door, and uh, they're going to take a hold of you as you are waiting for Christ and for what he has in store for you. Now, one of the benefits, and one of the things that suffering does um, suffering reveals our weakness. Our weaknesses. Suffering reveals our physical weakness. Reveals our moral weakness. And even reveals our spiritual our weakness. It is due to the remaining weakness in all of us that we can crumble under the weight of heavy suffering. Sometimes it's pretty heavy and your knees buckle because of it. Now, one particular weakness that Paul brings up here in the passage that you may experience in your life is the weakness of not knowing what to pray for in the time of suffering. Have you ever been to that point? Whereas you were in the grips of whatever it was that was shaking your life and not going away. Maybe it was complex and you just didn't know what to say. How to address God about whatever the matter was. Peter was like that. He was in the painful grip of suffering over a broken relationship. Something that hit him him very hard. He was so overcome with painful emotion that he just wasn't able to think straight, to get the words together, to, to know what to say to God about that. And Cindy suffered with chronic illness. And at the time, at times, the pain was so intense. And because it's chronic, it doesn't let go. It just, it's there to see, greet you every morning when you wake up. And there were times where she was so distracted to the point that she couldn't put the words together to pray. Not knowing what to pray. It's not that she hadn't prayed, but how do I pray for what's going on right now? It's been 10 years, same thing over and over and over again. What do I say? How do I pray? There are times when there are simply a loss, you're at a loss for words. Well, when that's your experience, there's something that you can be assured of here this morning. I hope you'll take it with you and remember it. That's what Paul is saying in the passage. And he's saying that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, will help you. He will help you. The same spirit that we've talked about all throughout Romans 8. The same spirit who made your heart his home when you were saved by grace through faith. That same spirit will help you. 
The same Spirit who gave you spiritual life, caused you to be born again to a living hope, that Spirit will help you. The Spirit who will one day give life to your mortal bodies. When Jesus, the risen Christ, comes back from the heavens, that Spirit will help you in your weakness. The same Spirit who confirms in your heart your status as the children of God in conjunction with His Word, that Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, will help you. He will help you in your weakness. When your spiritual knees are buckling under the weight of suffering and you can't find the words to utter to God, the Spirit is right there at that point to help you. Now, the word that Paul uses here for help is a word that simply means to lend assistance. It's a word that uh, Martha used. You remember Martha and Mary? Uh, they were in their home, and Jesus was there. He was a friend of the family, and he was there. And, and, um, and Mary was off, you know, with Jesus in some part of the home, fellowshipping with him. I mean, what a privilege, right? Fellowshipping with the living Christ. Well, Martha was off in the kitchen doing something very important. She was making a meal. And so she's off making the meal and uh, serving Jesus in that way. And Mary is just sitting at the feet of Jesus, fellowshipping with him, learning from him. She comes out. She's agitated. And she says to Jesus, will you tell Mary to come and help me to lend assistance to me with this meal? That's the same word. Speaking of, of the Holy Spirit coming to help you, to lend you assistance. Now, what kind of assistance does the Holy Spirit lend you in your time of weakness? How does he overcome your weakness of being at a loss for what in the world to pray to God about a given situation because of the nature of it. What does the help look like? Well, Paul says, this is the only place in Scripture where this is said, that the Spirit himself intercedes for you. That's the help that the Spirit of God does for you in, on those occasions. So there you are. You're struggling. You're struggling to get your thoughts together in the midst of your suffering. And you're clueless. You've grown to be clueless. Maybe early on you were praying this way and that way. And, but then it just, you know, everything is continuing. Maybe things are getting worse. And you go, I don't know what to pray anymore. I really don't know. I don't know what the will of God is as far as me praying to him about this situation. Well, at that point, in grace, the Holy Spirit conducts his ministry of intercession in the sanctuary of your heart. You know, back a couple, three weeks ago when I talked about the Spirit coming and making his home in, in your heart, He's just not killing time. He's working. He made you alive to God. He illumines the scriptures to your understanding. And here what Paul is saying is that the Spirit of God conducts his ministry of intercession for you in the sanctuary of your own individual heart. Think about that. Now, it's an activity that you don't perceive. It's not something that you go, oh, I feel the Spirit doing something. I think I hear him saying my name in prayer. It's nothing like that. All right, so don't say that I've said anything like that. But it's something that the Bible teaches. The Holy Spirit who took up residence in you to give you spiritual life, to cause you to be born again, to unite you to Christ so that you could experience forgiveness and the declaration of righteousness and adoption as the children of God. He is in your heart praying for you. The 
The Spirit, according to what Paul is saying here, the Spirit brings into the presence of the Father prayer that corresponds to His will for you as it relates to the trying trials and troubles that you undergo in life. That's amazing. I, I was excited this week as I was studying this. I mean, I, I, you know, I knew about, you know, this, I know about the Holy Spirit and His work, but I'd never really uh, dove deeply into the passage till this series. And I was just so encouraged. And it reminds you how weak you are. I mean, God's got you covered in every way because even though you're His child, you know, you're not superwoman or superman. You are very much in need of God in, in, uh, in your whole life. And here, when you bump up to those times where you just don't know what to do when it comes to praying about whatever, the Spirit takes up and He goes to work and He intercedes for you. Paul says that his prayer language are wordless groans probably means groans that are unspoken or silent. We certainly don't hear them. Uh, but he prays in this way to God the Father on your behalf concerning the things that you are struggling with. This doesn't take away the need, obviously, for you to be praying. Absolutely not. And prayer is a way that obviously we, um, when we place our requests on, in God's hands and so on, you know, it helps us with the anxiety and the worry that we might have over whatever it is we're, go you know, suffering. But think about this. I mean, you really never need to worry or fret. God is always looking out for you. I mean, his spirit steps up to bat in your place and he hits a home run with every request on your behalf. Never strikes out. It's always not a single, not a double, not a triple, but a home run. His every request is perfect, in other words. Flawless. You know, there are also times when, when we do pray and we ought to pray regularly and all that. Um, but what we're praying for or how we pray for a certain situation, it's not quite the best for you. And God, the Holy Spirit comes along. I think we can extrapolate from the scriptures about this. And he takes that and he says, ah, let me shape it up a little bit to make it fall in line with the will of God. And he utters it to the Father. God has taken care of all your needs. I mean, you are covered. Think about that. And to add to that encouraging news, I hope you find it encouraging. It may be, I don't know how it sounds to you, but it sounds encouraging to me. It is encouraging. To know that God, the Holy Spirit, the one who was there at creation, hovering over what the Father and through the Son was going to do to, as he created the world. Um, the Spirit who is all about highlighting the work of Christ and showing how great he is and making the work of Christ, you know, alive in our lives. Which, and this is one of the things that he does. Christ came to bat for you lived and died in a way that he did so that your sins would be taken out of, out of the way. And the Holy Spirit could invade your life and take up residence to make your house his home and then to be there in those times of your weakness to pray for you. Now that's good news. But there's even more good news. The Spirit's prayers for you are always effective. Always. He never gets turned away. Because why? The Spirit intercedes for the saints, Paul says, in keeping with the will of God. And that's an obvious thing, but 
We need to hear that. The Spirit intercedes for the saints in keeping with the will of God. So God the Father looks into your heart, your inner person, where the Spirit conducts his ministry of intercession for you. And God who searches your heart, and he knows it, something we always need to keep in mind, can't hide from God. He peers right through your facade and peers down into your heart, knows, knows your intentions, your thinking, everything about you. But the God who knows your heart and searches your heart knows the intent of the Spirit when it comes to his prayers for you. And the Spirit's prayers are always in line with the holy will of God. And that's those prayers are answered just like God wants to answer them. And so God always answers his prayers for you in your times of weakness. When you are at a loss as to what to pray, when you just don't know what to say regarding God's will concerning your situation, the Spirit prays. And those prayers are answered every single time according to the will of God. Now, when it, when it comes across and you see the answer, you may not like it. And we all struggle with that, don't we? Sometimes it's, it's exactly what I prayed for. Sometimes that happens. Remember what I talked about with James, James chapter 4, when I talked about when you plan, pray if the Lord is willing, then we'll do this or that. That's what we're talking about when it comes to prayer. And so there are times when you pray and everything lines up and the prayer request is answered and you are made well, a person is converted, you know, someone turns around, a marriage is received, whatever. Other times, it keeps going and going. The suffering doesn't seem to let up. You got to wait and you got to wait, you got to wait. Um, and then something occurs. Maybe not exactly what you wanted, but there's a change in the situation that's a bit better than it would have been if it continued on. Um, sometimes he says no, right? But the prayers uttered by the Spirit of God are always answered according to God's will. <clears throat> now, I think I, want, I need to say this, that, you know, the prayer, the intercession that the Holy Spirit makes on your behalf, in those specific times when you are at a loss for words, in no way, shape, or form, take away the importance of you praying, us praying as a church, on a regular basis according to the will of God. The will of God meaning the revealed will of God. That's what we have been given, which has been made known to us. That's what we pray in light of. We don't, we're not privy to the sovereign will of God. But we're privy to the Bible, and we're privy to what God teaches there. Um, when it comes to prayer, one of the obvious uh, places where we get direction for our prayer, to pray according to the will of God, is the Lord's Prayer, right? I mean, that, I mean, that's about as explicit as you can be. Jesus says, when you pray, he's talking to his disciples. When you pray, pray in this manner. Doesn't mean that you got to say the exact words. You can. That's proper. But when you sit down and you consider and seek to understand what those petitions teach you, then that certainly is having God's will expressed here in, in Matthew, um, the Sermon on the Mount concerning your prayer. Um, that will help you to pray in accord with the will of God. You know, Dave did that this morning in his prayer. He said, hallowed be thy name. You never, ever can go wrong with praying that request. God, may your name be made holy, put in a class all by itself. May you be esteemed higher and greater than anything or anybody. May you be number one in my heart and life. May my life be all about you and your glory. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May the peoples praise you. You can never go wrong with that prayer request. Ever. 
That's why missions exist. That's why evangelism exists. Because worship doesn't. And so that's a great prayer request for us as a church to make as we reorient ourselves and get moving forward and growing. May the peoples praise you. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. God, you are king. And yeah, you've taken up residence in me in the person of the Spirit. And may the reality of your kingship be evident in my life. I want you to take over and it be very clear that you are my king at work, in my relationship with my wife, with my husband, with my kids, my neighbors. May it be evident. Come! May your kingdom come. May your mighty rule come. Your gracious rule come and change my heart so that I'm all about doing your will and not my will be done. You can't ever go wrong with a request like that. And when Jesus is saying, pray in this manner, he knows, he knows the ropes. He's not missing anything. He knows the holy will of God. And those requests line up with that. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, we're, we tend to be self-sufficient. I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Look what I've done, look what I've done. You hear it all the time, right? This request helps you to realize and to think and then pray, God, every, every moment comes from you. <sighs> this breathing, the ability to breathe, this, you're making that happen right this moment. Give us this day our daily bread. We need for you to provide for us. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. I'm talking about relationships, right? God, forgive me for my sin as I forgive people who sin against me. Sometimes we can be guilty of saying, oh, Lord, please forgive me. I'm not forgiving you. Forget it. Well, that doesn't work in God's kingdom, right? His will be, for his will to be done on earth as it is heaven is to say, Father, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And that needs to be a regular reality in, in our relationships with one another. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. We want God's name to be hallowed in our hearts so much that we don't even want to get near sin. Lord, please, please help us to stay away even from being tempted. Help us not to get near the edge of sin so that we defile you and def defame your name. So you can't go wrong there, okay? That will help you line up requests that fit the bill as far as God's will is concerned. And then, you know, Paul himself, lots of the number of prayers in the New Testament that Paul made that are inspired prayers. And you certainly can't go wrong when you take those upon your lips, shape them consistently to your life and Things like uh, Paul asked the Ephesians and the Colossian Christians to pray <clears throat> that he might have an open door to preach and proclaim the mystery of Christ, the gospel. And he said, please pray for me. Pray that I will be bold and that I will be clear. You want to request to pray for me? It would, it would be that right there. That I would be clear. That I would be bold and have confidence in, in preaching to you the things that may be hard, but things that you need to hear. May we as a congregation be bold and clear that God would open the door for you and me in our sphere of relationships for the gospel. Can't go wrong with that kind of request. Paul also prayed in Philippians 1.9 that believers may abound in love and knowledge. In Colossians 1, 9, to be filled with the knowledge of God's will through wisdom and understanding. Once again, I mean, how can you go wrong there? God, I want to know you. Could you help me understand more about you as I study your word? You are infinite in your being. I mean, I will be studying you for the rest of my life and throughout all of eternity. But right here and now, would you open the eyes of my heart so that I can see, that I can see your beautiful Holy character. 
and be transformed by it. Help me to grow in wisdom and understanding, the ability to discern and make decisions in life. He also prayed in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, he prayed that God would make Christians worthy of their calling. We've been called into a relationship with a holy God. And when we consider who we're united to, what a prayer request that we would live up. I mean, God knows we, we tend to trip, but that we would live up and live a manner, in a manner worthy of our calling. That by his power, he would fulfill every good purpose of ours and every act prompted by the Spirit. But as I've said, with all that said, there are times when you just don't know what to say. And it's then that the Spirit takes it from there. He brings his prayer to the Father. And every single time it lines up with God's will. So the Father always answers those prayers accordingly. And because it's God's will, you know it's the very best for you. It's evidently the very best for us to be here in this situation right now. We've got to accept that, learn from it, and seek to move forward. I certainly hope that you have no doubt that God loves and cares for you. You've got the ultimate prayer warrior residing in your heart in the person of the Holy Spirit. You can't do better than that. And on top of that, equally as ultimate is the reality that Jesus Christ, the God-man, intercedes for you in heaven. The Spirit's interceding for you in your heart in those trying times where you don't know what to say. And Jesus Christ, the God-man, the mediator, he prays for you from heaven. I mean, he's got you covered. The late theologian John Murray, in his Romans commentary, said this. He said, the children of God have two divine intercessors. Christ is their intercessor in the court of heaven. Hebrews 7, 25, 1 John 2, 1. And the Holy Spirit is their intercessor in the theater of their own hearts. Christ, according to Hebrews 7.25, Prays that your faith would not give way so that you will arrive on heaven's shore getting what is being reserved for you in heaven. The Holy Spirit, in essence, intercedes for your sanctification. As you go through the hardships and the uncertainties of everyday life, you simply can't lose. Joined to your prayers, you have Christ praying in heaven for you, and you have the Spirit of God in the theater of your own heart praying as well. What a Savior. What a God that we serve. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. The Spirit of God is committed to praying for you in your time of need. Father, how good you are to us. Um... We're grateful for your grace that you have given to us in the person of Christ who came and met our greatest need, our need of salvation, our need to be right with you. And so he did all the work that was necessary so that we could be brought into a relationship with you as sons and daughters. And... By your grace, you have provided the ministry of intercession. Intercession that Christ, the God-man, makes on our behalf and the Spirit who dwells within us, praying for us in those times of need when we don't know what to pray. God, thank you for giving to us uh, such beautiful gifts that we so need because we are so needy. Lord, in light of that activity that takes place, help us to, to be confident and assured 
and to be about praying as well. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name.